so as you can tell today we are going to be going over the trailer that I have. Some of you guys have been asking what the setup is, so I'm going to go over the specs uh, of what it is, what I like, what I don't like, and maybe some helpful tips if you are in the market for a trailer. Maybe some of this will help. Alright, so like I said, I'm going to try and rattle off the specs for you guys. 2014 PJ 35 foot hydraulic dovetail tandem dual. Uh, what other options are on here? They are 10,000 pound upgraded Alco axles on it. This trailer has disc brakes uh, with electric over hydraulic system on it. Uh, I put the winch on, which I'll go over. Uh, obviously painted the wheels black just to match everything else obviously as you can tell everything on all my trucks is black so not really I mean a whole lot like I mentioned before this trailer is pretty expensive with all the options on it luckily I fell into you know a friend of a friend who was selling this used uh, very low mileage he only used it a couple times and it was about a year old when I picked it up and I've, and I've had it for about a year so like I mentioned before, I haven't really done a ton to it, really just cleaned it up. It's a little dirty right now, but painted the wheels. The tires are still almost practically brand new on it. Uh, I added the winch, uh, threw some stuff in the toolbox in the front there and kind of outfitted it. I put two new uh, Ultima batteries, one in the back that operates the hydraulic dovetail, which I'll show you guys, and one in the front toolbox, which is solely for the winch. Everything is wired so when the truck is hooked up and running, that it is has a charge line going to actually both of the batteries so both batteries are getting trickle charged when the truck is running uh, it also on the back toolbox where all the hydraulic pump and everything stuff is it actually has an external charge port where if you're parked and you're worried about your batteries going it, it actually has an external charger uh, to plug in to like a wall outlet so let me walk around I'll show you guys all the specifics of it quick shot of actually how the hydraulic dovetail works it's really just these two big piston rams that are attached to the back and it basically raises and lower this back 10 foot portion of this trailer all the way down to the ground to load and then picks it back up. The dovetail is actually capable of picking up 10,000 pounds and when it is traveling in the lock position which is what it is now I think it's 5,000 pounds that it's able to put on the tongue while traveling and I'll demonstrate how exactly it works here in a minute. Here's a shot of the back toolbox with the battery and the pump to operate the hydraulic dovetail. This is the remote for the dovetail and then this is the actual remote for the winch which I'll show you guys as well. This is actually the smart charging uh, which is attached right there to the side and is then hooked up into the battery and as I said before here is the external charge port which you can just basically hook an extension cord right up and it charges this battery and is also connected to the battery in the front of the toolbox. As you probably saw I stained the deck after I let it sit and age for a little while. Sorry if the audio is a little windy again today. So I stained it uh, you know like a cherry type of dark wood looks really good against the black I think. Alright here so here's the winch setup. 
Uh, I did do quite a bit of research and a couple buddies actually bought trailers the same time as me and just like truck parts or anything else, I mean you could argue the opposite to death, whatever you want, but this is what I have, this is my opinion on it, uh, take it for what it's worth. This is a Harbor Freight 12,000 pound winch uh, with some coupons and some discounts that I was able to find. This 12,000 pound winch cost me $300. So on top of that $300, I spent another $100 on a no questions asked uh, warranty. Basically, what that is, is you can literally put this thing on for six months, have nothing wrong with it, and return it if you really wanted to. Or if something does happen, you know, in the time frame, I believe it's unlimited. It's not really a year or two. It's unlimited, uh, no questions asked warranty on this winch. Um, I had talked to a couple people who had worn winches, and they said they had no better luck of, you know, hit or miss, whether they were the most reliable thing or not. I know a lot of people that have these, and for the price, I could really put two or three of these on for the equivalent of like say a Warren or a different company. So that's what I went with. Uh, I have had no problems with it. I've used it two or three times and absolutely no issues. It pulls really strong. I've pulled, you know, my 8,000 pound truck up on here once or twice. Just a quick shot of where they keep the spare tire. So pro tip here for you guys. I got this awesome Weber grill cover for their smaller grills. And this winch didn't come with a... Uh, cover for it but this small grill cover has straps I can't really see what I'm doing that uh, has these corded straps and literally it fits I'm trying to do it with one hand while I'm holding the camera but uh, trust me I'll show you guys at the end there look you see right there right there once it stitches down basically covers the entire winch once it's stitched up. I've traveled down the road, doesn't blow away, hasn't torn yet. It's pretty thick canvas, so pick those up, Lowe's or Home Depot. I ended up purchasing a separate plug for the inside of my bed, and it actually routes down and Ys into your existing harness. All you gotta do is just wire it, plug it in, that way your wiring whip uh, basically stays all contained right in your bed. All right, so here's the front and only toolbox that I have on the trailer right now. Over here in this corner, you can see in the battery box, I have another yellow Optima. It is almost 1200 cranking amps, so it's a pretty big battery for the winch, uh, just in case I really gotta use it multiple times. Couple pairs of gloves, um, and I have some spare hooks and some chains, axle straps, and then regular straps underneath here. Uh, I really like to chain stuff rather than strap it, but I have straps for uh, different stuff, axle straps and chains, and then binders I actually keep in the toolbox of my truck here. Since everyone's gonna ask what's in the toolbox of my truck, let me show you that as well. I'll wrap that up into this video. Got some chain binders, some ratchet straps, some smaller ones, uh, a couple different receivers underneath there. This is actually the air pump that I have extended the wiring, plugs into my cigarette lighter, and then that's used to pump up my airbags if I need to adjust it. I don't have a pump or in-cab thing, I just use this, it's just easier than all that extra mess underneath the truck. Uh, drill impact driver, never know when you're gonna need that kind of stuff. Just a couple miscellaneous broom, toe strap, bolt cutters, because you never know when you're going to need those. This stuff has all basically random hand tools um, and mechanics tools for stuff on the road. This, I believe, is jumper cables and then just a, you know, a multi-piece ratchet socket set, you know, for on the road stuff if I need it or anything like that. So that's what's in that box. All right, so let's show you how this specific dovetail works. They might have actually updated this since then. I know Big Tech uses a little bit of a different system now uh, to raise and lower their dovetail and lock it in. So this is what mine has. So you just go and grab the uh, whip with the controller from the side mounted toolbox. Basically hit the up button. You'll see it start to come up a little bit. Flip this lever. That unlocks the stops and then basically lowers it right to the ground. 
Okay, that's pretty much it. All the way on the ground, you can drive a vehicle up. This actually is a 10 foot dovetail and uh, super nice actually because that added length at, um, is pretty good for cars if you're not doing truck stuff. I actually had a newer Honda Civic and they're not the lowest lowered vehicles, but by all means they are pretty low with their you know air deflector on the bottom of the bumper. They really only have a couple inches ground clearance. I was able to, with this height, actually pull the car up almost all the way onto the dovetail with the back tires on and then lift it and drive it on the full way without messing with the front bumper or scraping or anything. So it is capable of loading pretty low cars right off the bat. So let's put it back up. Oops. Wrong way. Oh, another thing to mention too, is if I keep going down on this, this will actually push down and actually raise the entire back two axles off the ground if you needed to change a tire or something like that it is capable of actually picking up the whole back of the trailer and lifting uh, both sets of wheels off the ground okay let's go up now so what you're trying to do again is go a little bit past completely flat and then you're going to slide that lock over Go down. Okay, and that's it. It's locked back on the stops, and that's pretty much it. That's how it rides down the road. All right, guys, so pros, cons, why do I have this big, massive trailer? You obviously see the truck that I carry around primarily is a four-door short bed, probably weighs 7,000 pounds. This, this trailer is obviously uh, rated for way more than that. Uh, before I started making videos, I actually had a Polaris Razor 1000 uh, that I sold, and that was like my pit vehicle that I put on here, and that thing was about 10 feet long with the truck length. Um, basically, I really wanted a hydraulic dovetail for the reason that when you have ramps that last four or five feet, you can't use primarily be, unless you pull the truck ahead, flip the ramps, and then pull it back. Uh, I wanted to be able to use my entire deck space. And if I had something in the front, I didn't know if I was going to be able to pull the truck up all the way uh, to load and then flip the ramps over. So the whole reason why I got the dovetail is to utilize the entire space. I really wanted the most flexible trailer if I was going to be picking up cars, loads on the side, trucks. I really wanted to see if I could squeeze two trucks on here. I don't know, in fact, if I can yet. Um, but I really wanted the most versatile uh, trailer that I wanted to be prepared for anything. So the hydraulic dovetail lets me utilize the entire length of the trailer and pick up stuff. Uh, helps if stuff's broken down, all you gotta do is winch it halfway on the trailer and then pick the rest of it up with the dovetail, which it's more than capable of doing. Um, I really wanted a tandem dual trailer because uh, I've towed with single wheel dual axle trailers and when you get a pretty heavy diesel truck on it and you're going down the road, uh, gooseneck really helps with that, but if it's bumper pull, I just feel like single wheel trailers uh, tend to sway a little bit more at heavy speeds. This trailer can literally do 80, 85, rock solid, fully loaded, and not sway in the least. I don't recommend doing that, but um, it's really rock solid at high speeds. It doesn't sway in the least, and if you have a single axle trailer and you don't have that problem, then then that's fine. I don't, you know, I'm not saying that your trailer's crap. I'm just saying that's a reason why. I've towed with uh, other gooseneck tandem duels. I've towed with gooseneck uh, single axles. I've towed with uh, pretty much everything you can tow with. And this is just what I prefer to do the tasks that I knew I was going to be needing to do. Last but not least is the braking system on this trailer. If I can recommend one upgrade, obviously when you go into a trailer dealership, if you're looking to buy new, uh, there's options just like cars and all that other crap. Um, these disc brakes uh, with the electric over hydraulic system is insanely good. They stop damn good. That's all, I, I don't even know how to describe it. They are quite a bit better in my opinion rather than the regular brakes that come, you know, drum, whatever other style that comes factory. Last couple points that I really just want to hit on really quick is the PJ, if you look, has that 10 foot dovetail, which a lot of companies actually use like a nine or an eight foot, which moves the wheels back a little bit further 
towards the back and they're a little bit more spread out. I know Big Tex has a lot more spread and the axles are a little bit further back. And I actually, my brother had a Big Tex with that spread about the same length as this, not a dovetail, but same dimensions pretty much. At first I was a little concerned with this tail being so long and the axles being so forward that going around turns this tail swing was going to be uh, something that was going to have to be you know really watched going around turns that something uh, I didn't want to swing into another car going around a turn. I will say this after driving this trailer for a couple uh, you know like a full year or two the axles this far forward and a 10,000 or I'm sorry, a 10 foot dovetail, I would choose this setup over a smaller dovetail with a more spread axle. This trailer goes around turns. I barely have to swing this entire setup any wider than I would with, with a trailer half the size. Um, it really travels well, tracks well, going around turns, the 10 foot dovetail is not a concern in the least bit. The only con that I will say that I've found of this trailer thus far is, and I believe Big Tex does a lot better uh, system with how they pick up and lock this dovetail. Um, I believe they have more of a track system that travels up above the rear tires. When you're going down the road unloaded, uh, and it's only unloaded, this seems to actually bounce a little bit where it's hinged in the back. If you have anything on the back strapped down, it obviously doesn't move one bit, but unloaded, the back end does seem to bounce a little bit. Not really a huge deal. It's not really affecting anything that I can see uh, as of yet, um, but it's just something to note. All right, guys, I really don't want to blab forever about this trailer. If you have any other questions, just leave them down below. I'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you guys have. I usually try and get back to each and every comment that you guys put down below. Again, I appreciate all the support that you guys give me. I appreciate you guys watching, and I will see you very soon. Last thing I want to mention to you guys as well, if you're watching to the end, is the giveaway I am only going to put up for a couple more days. Definitely, probably Wednesday, Thursday, I'm going to cut that off and pick a winner and maybe do uh, a video like Friday or Saturday and let you know who the winners were. So make sure you go check out those last couple videos that I posted to find out if you haven't seen that. So giveaway, 8 Lug Mafia gear, 8... eight uh, 8lugmafia.com if you happen to unfortunately not win but still want a hat. They have t-shirts, sweatshirts. Go check out them online and I will see you guys soon.